they're, they're, they're champions, right? They've got range and they have DPS. But So, having that percentage damage early really helps them. It yeah. helps snowball them early. Yeah, yeah. So, you've got those picks coming through. And then, what about this Aya Rakan land? Of course, Shields got hit a couple patches ago. Of course, Rakan just got smashed a couple patches ago as well. But, we're still seeing this Aya Rakan land come through and be really strong against, like, your Lucian Brawms and your Ezreal Brawm time catches and that sort of thing. One of the reasons why it's so strong is because there's so much engage from, like, two screens away with the Rakan E in the W to the O. You can't, look, where's the counterplay in that? Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're trying to like, not worry about dying, you have to stay three screens away. And that's not fun for CSE. Yeah, yeah. And looking towards supports now, of course, this, this hasn't really been hit too hard, of course, Shields did get hit, so Jan is officially dead now, pretty much. We're not really seeing too much of her anymore. Lulu's still coming out, but we're seeing the resurgence of Tank, Junglers, and Pike, I love and Pike. Brand. I love Pike. Why? Like, obviously, Tank, Junglers, it, it, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? The Shield Junglers are disappearing, so you want to bring in the Tank Junglers instead to have a little bit more front line uh, uh, supports coming through. So, well, Tank Junglers as well, I mean, Sejuani is still a, a sort of semi thing if you don't want to go for that damage in Trundle and, and the like. But, you see these Tank supports coming through, but we've got Pike, who came out just recently, and then Brand, who's just weaseled his way back into the support, support role again. I mean, why well, do you think this is? They can't deal damage and kill you if they're dead. That's a fair point. That's a so fair point. So you kill them. Yeah. Your, your support is done. Yeah. You don't need support anymore. Yeah. And with Pike having an execution on his ult that goes through shields, he just makes everything so much easier to deal with. And not to mention the gold drop as well that you get for the rest of the team who participated in the kill. So you can't even say it's a kill still. No. Because you get the gold anyway. It just so. takes the KDA a bit. <laughs> So we end up getting that sort of thing in the end, but as we keep this one going on, Aaron, I mean, let's look towards, I guess, top lane once more. I guess we I guess we covered Jax a little bit. But what about the picks who have stuck around for just like that, that long while, like Cho'Gath now? Like Mundo, we've seen come back and playing quite a bit. Aurelia, pretty much ever since her rework comes out, has been dominant across the whole sort of the rift, basically. She was basically. so, so overtuned that she could be played in like four different roles. Yeah, and she still can. So Very, it depends. Yeah, well, obviously, it always depends when you have your matchups and the skill and that sort of thing. But from what we've seen so far, Aurelia's still been a really strong pick. Aurelia is still ridiculous. Like, she has so much dashes. Just, okay, you're going to dodge her E. Yeah. yeah you hit with an ult. Yeah. <laughs> She's just got dashed you. She's just blades flying out everywhere. You can't. And then if you decide, oh, let's burst her. Nope. W. Yeah. Damage reduction. And it got buffed on 816. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, have fun killing that. But even still, I mean, Aurelia, we've said before in the past, has had a really strong early game, one of the best early game champs in the game. But when you get towards that mid game, even like the mid, mid to mid late stages, she starts falling off pretty heavily. Yeah, that's Aurelia's one problem. She's got a great early game, but the later the game goes, the more you start to lose. So. The good counter to that would be Gangplank. Yep. Because he has the complete opposite effect. Yep. He is not great up until about 30 minutes. Then he gets online and then he starts doing damage. So maybe they'll pick that into it if they do pick it. But I don't think they'd, they'd risk it. You don't think they'll risk early. that one come through? No, I don't think they'll risk getting behind so much so early just to hopefully come back in 30 minutes. Yep. And speaking of champs that have a lot of high damage, I want to speak about Kidra. Right. Jungle Pit came through. We saw it played in literally every game in the OPL Grand Finals. Why is she coming back like that? She's been buffed, I know, a little bit more recently, but is there, do you think it might be a specific team comp thing? Or do you think it might be just because she has a lot of that DPS, that burst damage?
But another thing that's really good is that you have an AD carry. So if you want that AD carry on your team, you don't want to play Bolin. Just take Kindred. Yeah. So you've got an AD carry on the Kindred. So yeah. you can play Bolin. Brand Bolin. Or even like these AP builds that we've seen coming yeah. through. Like, of course, we will mention the Kaiser is one. We also have uh, the Virus as well as another Cogmore coming through. So I think it kind of like builds out there of having that AD DPS. Yeah, it's super helpful. Like, yeah. Kindred has so much mobility, so it's hard to lock her down. Yeah. And even if you do, she just bolts. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see if they do play the Kindred. But it's very dependent on getting your mark. So guys, we are still waiting here to start off game number one, of course it is LA Knight up against Gwenunga in the National High. Blue Blue's Knight, LA Knight on the red side. If you are just joining us, of course, my name is Bailey Badrock. I'm joined still by Aaron Red Bull Foster. So, okay, so, of course we've got, we've got a big, big event happening here, of course it's all down to a big best of three set. Just got word then. Support? Yeah. No! <laughs> Why? 
they can't kill you if they're dead. But no, I, I got that part. We covered that with Glenn, but you're going to have to explain this to me, Aaron. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little it bit was shocked. picked in the OP. I thought it must be good. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> sure it is. But, okay, so why, why the gentleman? I guess you get the board hops. I mean, that's the thing. Um, you could reposition their AD carriers. He's in a good yeah, spot. that's Just true. Just flag. Yeah. Suddenly he's in your back line. Yeah. And can't do anything. Yeah. So that's one. Another pick is also Zach before. Yeah. Thought that a bit yesterday. Yeah. Didn't go too well. Yeah. But, but it's still an understandable pick, of course, having that crowd control and a team fight. I mean... It also works if they picked an Oriana. Because then you have potentially two engaging, especially if you take some like the Dragons they picked yesterday. Yeah. So yeah. you've got two ball carriers. Yeah. To fight. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the Zach Holt grouping them all up. Yeah. So if they do go for the full Wombo Combo team today, that would be a fun interaction. So obviously good intentions. Yeah. Picking up the Zach support. Okay, cool. So obviously get that that's amazing good intentions. We're actually just getting word from production crew then that we're getting the computer up and running now. For that player that had a little bit of tech issues beforehand. But just to kind of wrap things up a little bit here then, we've got Zach Lee Sin for some reason. Azir, Adivia, Kled. Is there any other picks that come to mind? Anything at all? Not that I can think of right now. Maybe a Quint in the jungle. Quint jungle is something that is very volatile. Yep. Once she hits 6, she's got so much like map pressure. She can yeah. get the top lane yep. two seconds later be fought. Yeah. It's also really good at dueling, especially if she goes lethality. Yep. So maybe they pick it up in the jungle for curious if he plays it. Yep. If he doesn't, try it the first time. Nothing will go wrong. I mean, they got they got three games. Best yeah. Three. They, 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 they got rounds. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Just <laughs> time for the first one. Uh, but Quinn, Quinn jungle. I've heard Quinn top before. I've seen Quinn mid before. Quinn not jungle. Quinn mid and Quinn jungle are very similar because you, both of them are looking to roam. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. She just gets a little bit more fun if she goes mid. Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, uh, there's, there's quite a few interesting picks. I think we, we I don't, I don't believe we'll see any of them. Maybe I mean uh, Ozir. Is, well, I could definitely see coming through because of course we've seen the Asian Doom did pick that one up. Zach could potentially be because of the OPR. I don't think we're going to see at least in support as much as you would like to, Aaron. But I just want someone to play it. Play it mid. Do me proud. Well, how about we look over real quick here some of the picks and bands then that these guys might be going for. I mean, this is something that we will probably say some of the champ selects, but seems to be getting some time. Might as well cover some of them now. And an interesting one. Speaking of interesting picks, I mean, we saw in Adelaide highs what, right? When they went up against uh, Nazareth Catholic College, we saw in the end that they did ban out Glenn in the top lane, so that could be a potential pick there. But there's also a lot of Sandra ban. And I'm just seeing question marks. <laughs> that was when Kiryu was a mid laner. Yeah. So it might be one of his pocket picks, but... Yep. Lissandra is a very interesting pick. She's got so much CC, so much AoE damage, but she takes a while to scale up. Yeah. She doesn't yep. have that early burst. So yeah. If they do go for a late game comp, it might come out, but I don't think it'll happen. Mainly because of the, of the roll stop, probably, yeah. between Kiryu and... Potato. Well then, we're looking at some other bands here that would ban against them as well. We see a Morgana ban. So of course Morgana being one of those key stable picks to go with Kaiser. Yeah. Morgana Kaiser is a very strong lane. Because you land a binding, she can just ult. Yeah. She, she lands an ult. She can jump on them. Yeah. Kaiser gets helped out so much if she gets a CC, jump, uh, CC support. Yeah. So... And not to mention the black shield as well. Yeah. So when Kaiser jumps in, can't we CC down? Pretty much stay alive. Depending on what level she is, she might have the invisibility with the E. So, it'll be interesting to see what they pick up in this game. Yeah. So then besides that, we've also got Cho'Gath and Lulu bands. I think that was more just to round out their comp. Yeah. We're going to be jumping into champ select now. Anyway, guys, so game number one is finally going to be starting now. Of course, Glenelga International High School A up against the side of Adelaide High School. We're going to be champ select in just a short time. Echo Bands are coming through. Echo Bands. Yeah. Interesting. Well, one. Coming through. There. Echo Bands. That's 
Sure, with the Echo Band, maybe they've got someone that plays a lot, but it might not be super common. It would be a good pick to see, but so her Zoe Band, a lot more common, especially with her like massive buffs. And Dragus is such a good jungler. Not too surprised to see that gone. Kaisa Band, not surprising at all. She's super strong with an AD carry. Just waiting to come and see who is the jungle, the last band for Glenunga International High. We're gonna do get banned from Adelaide High again. Yeah, so kind of interesting to well, not too interesting. Well, I mean, we we're just covering that. But I mean, it kind of stuff like Kaiser and Morgana Lane from coming through there. Yeah, it's not too surprising they banned that, but Kaiser was already banned on the side of Adelaide High. So and Gray's last band. Not yep. surprising at all. And the Zoe band. It's not that's something we didn't quite cover there. One of those super strong mid lane picks because the Pattern Star just nukes out pretty much anyone on screen. I mean... They, she did get nerfed, so she can't just double, like, ult forward and then one-shot you without yep. her Pattern Star hitting, but yep. we do get the clad. Yeah. That makes you happy. Yeah. We are going to get that set up, obviously. First pick there for the blue side. For red side, we're getting Rakan picked up first. So I would be very surprised if they don't pick Zaya here. Yeah. This is normally a common pick there to see the Rakan Zaya, but Trundle will actually be locked in here. Locking, we'll make sure they got that locked in jungler. That is very risky. Because depending on what Glenunga want, they could potentially just pick carries and not worry about tanks. And then Trundle has no one to hold. So we'll have to see if they do go over the carry. But. I would not be surprised if they do pick up the Zaya. And now we're looking to see what the next pick is. Got a Warwick hover here, actually. That's locked in. Mm. Talking about interesting picks. <laughs> Why Warwick? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it might be just a comfort pick then, maybe, from Mustachio? I, th I think so. I yep. think it'll be something he's comfortable on just to get the jitters out yep. if it's the grand final. Yeah, yeah. And a Cassiopeia. Yeah. Gordon is a carry that plays it. Apparently everyone plays it. Yeah. We were just talking about before how Cass has that great nuke damage, the DPS as well, and even the setup where they're ultimate shoes. You kind of have a bit of an all rounder. And if you get someone that has a high skill level on this champ, she can be potentially the deadliest champ on the, on the, in the game. We saw that at, with at that the time, Curio so. game. Yeah, exactly right. So I'll have to see if that ends up being the case. Not Adelaide High. So, Adelaide High picking up the Athelus. Yep. Maybe looking to block some of that damage coming out. It's going to be the Jinx band. Do so we see the Jinx band? Yeah. Jinx is a very interesting pick. Because yeah. you take the Seagull Tech on it, and she is so strong when it comes to mid game. Yeah. Ferris band, not too surprising. Super strong AD carry. You can't build that AD or AP. Of course, also, actually, I'm, I just want to cover something with the game because we've got a Rakan pick up, first pick here for the side of Adelaide High. Zion was a pick, still left open as well, and doesn't get banned out. What's interesting to me is the Fiddlestick ban. Yeah. Why? I'm That's interesting. It must, I mean, even so, because I mean, be a Warwick's support in Fiddlesticks. Pick. Yeah, I'm thinking it might be like uh, Fiddle support. I mean, because what else would it be? Warwick's already locked in. Cassie appear support. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, like a, a real big picky Aaron. We get Rakan, gets first pick. Zaya doesn't get picked at all straight after that, or even in the first pick phase. Then and gets gets, gets left open, does get banned out and gets through. Like, do you think maybe Glenunga just aren't particularly fussed about the Zaya Rakan? They're either not fussed, or they're saying they can take him in the 2v2. And Lucian is very strong early, so it would be strong in this matchup because you've got the Lucian and the Tom. They should theoretically fully out the Zyra Khan, but they left the top lane for the last pick, so they wanted to give Shantanom the counter pick in the top. So 
He's gone for the Mundo. And I'm not sure how that matchup plays out. I'm pretty sure Kled wins that matchup. Yeah, I mean, Kled definitely has the, the more damage than what the Mundo does. He'd always get the execution as calling if, if he so chooses and stops a lot of that healing. We've seen that a lot recently when Mundo does get locked in. But Lucian, Tom, Kench. I was expecting Lucian Brawl. That's more of the picks that we're used to seeing here. So why do you think they went for this Tom Kench besides obviously maybe having that map mobility? I feel like it might be a bit more comfortable for him. Like, Braum and Braum's fun, but he's also a lot harder to manage. Because if you wall too early, then you miss the tornado and suddenly your team loses because of last breath. Or you miss the ultimates and you ult the floor instead of ulting straight where they're running. So, we'll be interested to see exactly why they did like they picked what they did. Maybe he'll come over as a hard carry, but they didn't pick a tank in the jungle, like a dedicated tank in the jungle. On the side of the so here we go, guys. Now we're jumping into the first game here on the ref of course at Glenonga International High, up against Adelaide High School in this first best of three series. But while we're getting to the other game stages, of course, they've, they've got to move around the map and, and find out what they want to do exactly. But for now, Aaron, how about we just talk about the quick spread for the Lumens? I think as the strong, as a 5v5, Glenonga has definitely got a stronger 5v5. But I'm not sure how I feel about Adelaide High's comp. It's very one dimensional. Like, they want to fight. They want their Mundo to be their front line, to be a tank, be annoying, don't die. But there's no setup other than the Rakan for the Ethelwind. So, very interesting to see if he gets good ultimates off. But. It's going to take a lot of communication to get their ults right. And of course we're sitting here now, we're just in a game pause here. So not too sure what the reason is for that for now. We'll get back to you guys about that one. But we'll just cover a little bit, a little bit more of these picks a little bit more here, Aaron. Let's talk about Warwick real quick. Right? We're not expecting that at all. Not at all. Not even Rob Mullen. It wasn't even on our radar. Like, Warwick doesn't exist to us, basically. Fourth pick is the grand final. They've already thrown a curveball. Yeah. But Starshio picks that one up. Assuming then that it must be a comfort pick. Potentially, maybe he wanted the like pseudo tank against the Trundle, who's yep. going to beat him in the 1v1, but it's gonna be interesting to see exactly what happens. Yeah. So then as we see that maybe coming through, I mean do, do you think he but besides the trundle, do you think maybe he was picked maybe I get on there, maybe Kenner out the ass away? He was obviously he was picked a little bit later. Um could he maybe do well against Zaya Rakan? I mean, obviously, they have a lot of mobility. Rakan can probably stop a lot of all engages, of course, not counting the can't be the same ultimate, so... But in that regard, he's got Zaya Rakan Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, maybe it's comfortable, like comfort picks? So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. See these guys now, they are getting into the rift properly now, got into the river. Got a Time to see. Interesting star here. With I believe four members in that dot bush. So we'll be interested to see what happens here if anyone does step up. Interesting to see what happens. I mean, we have seen this a couple times before. We actually we saw this in one of the vlogs that we covered Minions where one spawned. of the teams tried to do this to Adelaide High and then I kind of just screwed their attempt over. I mean, with the pillar coming through from Trundle, they, they just ended up completely displacing all of the members, separated the team, and they were able to just fully commit and capitalize on that team, kind of just being confused about what's going on. So... It could be a thing. So... We'll just have to wait and see. As standard everywhere else, really defensive early. We do have to be starting the top one, so maybe he'll go for the gank bot. He also may go for that level 2 gank top one. Okay, a few different opportunities. 
opportunity for both junglers to see what they go for for now, but if you are jumping at the start of the game, you can see something, I guess, overly crazy at the start. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some interesting starts, but it's only going to be pretty standard for now. Nothing too crazy right now. Everything's just trying to... Chopped down pretty hard here, and first blood is actually going to go over to Mustachio. That is not too surprising. There was no information from the front of the so he was a bit of a way not expecting it. There was no ward coming really well. Like, yeah, from and not to mention the flashes burned as well from all three members up there. Escape that one. Sick Lalunga are trying to pick up another kill here, go for their second one and try and put behind Till Potato. He's been a pretty aggressive here in the mid lane against the Casting of Fear. Misaki is everywhere right now. Like, oh, this top side, I can push up a bit. Nope, you're kidding. This is so well passed from him. He got the top shuttle, he got his blue, his red, and the enemy red. And he got flash on top and mid lane. So right now, Stucko is out jungling, period. Maybe it's because he's not comfortable with the lane. Maybe he did it. Hopefully it's just a jitter and we see it pick up later in the game. Of course Kitty as we mentioned a couple of times now was a mid laner beforehand or a typically jungler thing that we're aware of. So of course, that could be something coming to play. Mustachio could just have a little bit more experience in the jungle, know a little bit more about pathing, ganking, and so forth. So, there is something that we haven't touched on yet. Adelaide High School has one very big score in their college. That's a lot of AD. They have no AD throughout their team. So, the later this game goes, the more time gets, and the more we can go tanky and not die. So, I think Adelaide Pyro is like, they need that. So, I mean, of course there's a lot of armor that you can see end up coming out from these guys. I mean, Cass probably might prioritize the Zonyas anyway, but my friend is a little bit earlier just to make sure that we've got that armor available. I mean, of course, Clint, I might go for 10 minutes late, we'll go with that mobility. He's going into Jensen on right now, dropped to half health. Already, just from that small combo, even without the executioners or Tiamat or any of those items coming through against the Mondo, with a long sword and a Doric's blade, and he's half healthy. Lead is so strong. So, I'm just interested to see if the lane gets it more. And here it is for a big gank here, mid lane, the exhaust drops straight away onto Phil Potato. Teleport's coming in, but it's not going to come in fast enough because the Asian noob will pick up the second kill for the side of Glenunga there. But Adelaide are looking for a kill top side now. True Legend's in big trouble, and he will fall to kill you. Kills go to two different lanes there, but Glenunga still come out on top. And there's another thing that we saw in the pod was the late teleport. This time it was Genshinov and not the AD carry. Maybe it is the lack of communication on the teleport, so it was good to hear it being top lane. We found it out for And Tank Hill. A bit of both there the mid lane as well, so only just got out of that one makes you tell me, of course, in that increased movement speed. But you can see now, we've seen before, there's a bit of a calm game for the early games. Look like it's coming out of the window, and this looks like the kill is left, right, and center. This is the kind of link to the level for the way. Fast pace, back, and back, and kills everyone. This is my favorite. Just shy of 1k between the two teams here in the early game, so even with. 
with them being one kill up. You can see the LA Vice trying to keep that gold up on that CS and uh, coming through for that one. Shedstomp does drop the ultimate. True Legend doesn't even care though. Just look at the damage out from home. Flashes forward for it as well. But just misses shy of it. Kitty will take out Mustachio though. Over in the bot lane as Rip Nathan takes out Banter. And so far, kill for kill down here bot side. But Mitsu's in trouble. Taking so much DPS. Has to burn out the flash there if he doesn't want to fall to the Zaya there bot side. Not entirely sure what happened on that bot side of the map. Safely, but so far, I mean, as we mentioned, there so a great engage going out for True Legend 3 top side, but unfortunately, he just was shy of picking up that kill. Yeah, he missed the Q, he missed the Q, quite a bit wide, so kind of unfortunate that he didn't get that, but he's still almost 30 feet ahead. I'm already aiming in, well, not even Trying to get this woman, not happening. You can see the hanging around top side once more, maybe looking to get through like three ahead here. But he's already lost skull, so that damage is gone. Mustachio is tanking it. They just pick it up. Mustachio will take out Mundo, but it's not a talent for too long. It just gives a kill over to the Monday for free. As Kudu now, looking to take out True Legend 3. Doesn't have Skull. We're going to build up that Rage once more, but it doesn't matter in the end. Trundle will still secure that one now. 3 and 0 here for the that, side of Adelaide Highs Trundle. That was a massive, massive misplay on the part of Glenunga. You saw the Oh, the engage now, bot side though, Banda goes for the charm ultimate, Nathan has just gone out there by Mitsu, they're looking for the DPS in the back lines here, Banda's taking so much damage from the culling, and Nathan will secure that one, as Kyo's in trouble now, has to flash away, Mitsu's just trying to get to the Mauro there on the dummy to try and keep him locked down, but Nathan will secure it there, double kill for the Lucian, and so far, the Nunca International High are really taking it to Adelaide. surprised to see that one. We did see the two teams trade Mountain Drake for the Herald, so in the long run, Mountain Drake would be better, but to open up the map, the Herald is so much better. <laughs> Of course, has the tornado for the knockout, but also 
has the pillar and the knock up from the Khan to see if he can go for an all engage like that. Because we later haven't seen Morris just yet. So he's highly thrown on chance. Bot side, the major engage coming through on Drew Nathan. Turns out the culling ignite dropped on him as well. No one's pulling just yet. It's a teleport will come down. Nathan will take out Dyer there. Kitty will be next to fall. The shutdown gold from to Mustachio as Ben has no choice but to run away. But the ult from Ben, then he's got a tower dive for it. And Rip Nathan will secure his fifth kill of the game. And that comes from the late intelligence from the ground. They should have really stood back on that level from the ground. And then they should have stood back on that level from the ground. And then they should have stood back on that level from the ground. Yeah, of course, Hamza, who can get that first goal in the game, will be the uh, top side there, as we do see in the end. Tilt Potato does pick up the kill onto the Asian dude. That was a straight up 1v1. He missed the ultimate from the Cassiopeia and just got destroyed. So, very good outplay there. And this just helps him get ahead even further. Not to mention the Herald does still have a slight push there top side. We dealt with pretty quickly though, but I mean, first Brick Gold to the no side of the Nunga. He might push another two ways. Deja Noob is spawning back up. Like, yeah, no, they are gonna, we have a lane swap coming through. So we're getting the down under lanes finally, Aaron. Coming through for this one. But as I was about to mention... And then Hyson swapped back. They're still going for the traditional 1-1-2. One, one, Maybe they're not expecting it. It's not too uncommon to swap your lanes when you get that tower. So maybe they didn't respect the fact that Kilonga would do it. Of course, we are getting some item builds coming through as we do get a game pause at the moment. Hopefully, we'll hear back about what the reason is for that in just a sec. But for now, Aaron, as I was about to mention, we're getting some completed... Oh, there it goes. So, we're getting some completed items coming through. So far, seems pretty standard across the board, though. Yeah, nothing too surprising in terms of items. Got the Clegg going for the tier mains, the Black Saber. Not surprising at all for the Mundo. You, did, you do see he went for the Ninja Tabby to help him out in that 1v1, but... Not gonna help him out a whole lot when it comes to fighting that Cassie here at all. So hopefully he starts to build his magic resist up, but if he tries to walk anywhere near the Asian Nib right now, he's just gonna die. And like that, that's the knock of I was talking about from the trundle there. As still Tanaja goes all in to take this one out, but Kiryu you will actually be the one to secure there from the ultimate. In the end anyway, the Asian Nib will fall down mid lane. Allied High can look towards his mid lane tower. Granonga International High are looking to respond with a top lane brick of their own. And they don't even get the tower mid, there was no minions there. So, Dejanu did take out a few minions before he died, so... That was probably best case scenario for them. But... He did not have any wards up. He's got his bottom side water, but there's no wards in that top side to help him. And the Abyssal Voyage dropped in mid side here with Mustachio as Mitsu gets control over Kiryu. He's kind of stuck between the back lines at the moment, but the culling coming through onto Tilt Potato. The Wind Wall will come out to block out the end of it, but most of the damage came through anyway. And Rip Nathan will secure the kill onto Tilt Potato. But the side of Kanonga International High doesn't look like they're finished yet. Trying to pick up Shantanom here and Kiryu in their own jungle. There's not a whole lot they can get here. I think this is more just fully in. Yeah, True Legend 3 still trying for it though. Anyway, he's getting caught out actually. Will get taken away by Minto there, but Banta, a nice W charm coming through, but he's by himself pretty much there. Does regroup the rest of his team, however. This is a 4v5 right now, but the health bars on the side of the are so low that it might not be worth for them to stick around any longer. And they have taken quite a bit of damage here. Look to try and see if they can just open the mid lane here and get complete control over the first tier of the map. See where it goes from here. Of course, the tower's only got a quarter health. Adelaide are holding on to this fairly well, but the tower is going to fall eventually. No further engagement by the team, though. But Two Potato was maybe looking for it. Adelaide High chasing these guys off. Nothing will happen here. Everyone will just go back and reset. So they were trying to look for anything if they did overstay, but they respected it and just backed off. Oh, Two Potato was looking for that ult, though. I mean, we probably could have taken them two out if the tornado hit, but just misses shy of it. Now, Adelaide High are kind of limping around the map right now to try and come back from their lost towers, of course, having lost vision across the map, and are maybe looking to set up for this mountain break in 13 seconds. This Lucian is huge right now. He's 30 CS ahead of the Zaya. He's got his book. He's almost got his Black Lever, so... 
I wouldn't be too surprised to see them like not fight at all. As we do see the teleport coming in from the time kids falling as he does have spell book. We see they're just going for this vision battle here at the moment. Mountain Drake will be picked up here by Adelaide High. Kitty does get caught by the hook there from Clint. So maybe looking to back off now. There's too much pressure. He did get chunked out heavily there, so he, he has to go heal up, otherwise he's entering this fire half hour. Of course, it's the longest chance to pick up their second Mountain Drake of the game. Mitsu's looking around for it. Mitsu's going to fly down. You can see Adelaide High looking to try and stop this one. They don't want to let the second Mountain Drake fall. Will be picked up anyway. Getting the start of a team fight. Bands is looking for the knockoff, but completely misses as the culling from Nathan. The back line will follow with the Asian Noob, who picks up Keo, picks up Shanta for the double kill. But Tilt Potato is going try and get the other kills for the rest of his team. Picks up a double himself, but the quadra for the Asian Noob, the Penta, comes through for the Cassiopeia over a Mountain Drake, 17-25 in. That's insane. He went from being one and two to six and two. He just got skyrocketed back into this game. He couldn't fight the Esso at all before. I think he beats him now, 100%. As well, Lucian did not get touched at all that fight. They tried to get onto him with the, with the Rakan, did not get touched. Didn't get hit by a single bit of CC, and it was just well cut into the voice of them. Not to mention, not even Rip Nathan, but they knew both of them. The main DPS from the side of Longa International High just left in the back lines to go absolutely ham. Alien High, they tried for it. You can see Tilt Potato, he picked up two kills. He was trying to get in there. But the damage output, and I guess the crowd control in that team fight from Longa International High A was just too much for Alien High to deal with. And now, Alien High needs to scale up. They need to wait until their Mundo is this big, beefy front line. They need to wait until Yasuo gets his 100% crit, his desire to get his crit. They can't fight them at the moment at all. They just need a turtle and hope for the best. Do you see the Baron coming up in a minute or so? Of course, coming up to that 20 minute mark now, so we're well into the mid game stages now in this first matchup, of course, in this best of three series. Longer High up against Adelaide High here in the Premier Division Grand Finals, of course, there's big stakes for whoever can win this one. I mean, the right points prize is big, having time for rising those medals, but these teams are mainly battling it out for that qualification for the AUNZ High School League Grand Finals. Does At this point, even if they don't win, I think that the Asian New will be happy that you got a Penta in the Grand Final in Game 1. Yeah. Everything's definitely on the line for both these two teams yeah. right now. They're going to come out full steam ahead to try and see if they can pick this one up. As you mentioned, Aaron Barron is only uh, not even uh, a minute away. It's only 20 seconds away right now. And so far, Klanonga, they've got complete control over two different Drakes as well. Uh, they only just out the Rift Herald. And they've got two Mountain Drakes as well as having Lucian and Cassiopeia. As well as the Clint. They yeah. can burst this Baron down super quickly. Yeah. And yeah. not give AHS any chance to respond. True Legend does meet up with Dilk Center here. Bot side, he's looking to try and chunk this one down. Ult forward as well. He's going all in to try and take him out. Loses Skull, but we're going towards top side now. And ends up being a 4v4 here. Masashio gets the fear, but the engage from Kiro in the back line. The amount of DPS might be too much for Kanunga now. But still, Dejan Noob is there. Picks up a kill. So does Kiryu. Rip Nathan will secure one onto the Zaya here. And Kiryu and Banta have to try and back away. Banta will sacrifice his life to get get the kill to you out, but if he's not too careful, he'll fall anyway. And Minsu will pick that one up. A double kill here for Rip Nathan as well. That was very hard to in there. Yeah, Adelaide they... might still pick up that bot lane towel. No, they didn't even pick up the bot lane towel. And not only that, True Legend never died in that 1v1. He just ran away from him. So, see the repeat here. Yeah, the engage coming through again. Tilt Potato almost has his ult, and there's the Ignite. True Legend's in big trouble. He's lost Skull. The Tornado will come through, and Tilt Potato picks himself up an easy kill bot lane, and will finally pick up this bot lane tower for Adelaide High. That... I don't think that's worth it all. They lost, what, four members and a top in the tower for an outer tower and a single kill? 
Yeah, Red Mantis is in big trouble, doesn't have the mana. We do see Minton come in with the Abyssal Poise and will get him just out in time with the slightest bit of help. Tomcat just such a fun champion to verse. They caught him out, they did everything they could and then just om nom. It saved. I mean, I guess that's just great communication from the side of Gnunga. Like, sure, they try not to back away too much. I'm coming, I will get you out. And of course, just Zarya and Rakan, of course, ends up being such a great combo. But when there's 0 9 down combined, it's, it's not looking too good. Especially when the Lucian that you just tried to catch out is 8 0. No. So, if they get him, that's a lot of gold back in their pocket, but they would have to waste so much. And now he's got his Essence Reaver as well as his Black Lever and Book. He is massive at this point. So, of course, that's 8 0 and 8 for Rip Nathan. 7 2 and 3. The Asian noob. The two main damage dealers are very, very fed in this first game here, 22 21 into the game. And they're still scale. Yeah. Cassiopeia scales super well into the late game, as well as Lucian being a good tank buster. So, chances for Adelaide High to come back into this one are very slim, but it all depends on how they team fight and if Zaya and Yasuo can get ahead in these team fights and not get damaged. But I mean, just look at the gold difference. Glanga High will have almost 10k gold difference. It's a pretty tough art for these guys to come back at the moment. If Glanga go for fights that they shouldn't, in places they shouldn't, like a chokehold, maybe they lose. But that's only if the Asian move and the Rib Nathan G get caught. You can see they're trying to catch out True Legend, but he will be able to dash away from Kira's engage fairly easily. As we get our third Mountain Drake, it seems the gods of League here want to give us just a great siege and a Baron plays potentially. Gronga Higher are definitely stepping up to the call and we'll pick up their third Mountain Drake safe and sound. This is so unlucky for Adelaide High. They probably got like one of the worst things for them in the Dragons this game. Now they can't really like answer any split or siege because the three mountains are just too strong. See now they're definitely moving on their way here, looking for a Baron play, setting up vision. I mean, they've got three Mountain Drakes, they've got the Lucian, as you mentioned, Aaron. I mean, even him alone could probably, probably just solo one at this point. I mean, nah, just, just, just leave him there, just let him <laughs> solo. I mean, basically a, a full build master, e, right? He can, he can heal himself. But you can tell Alien High are definitely wary. They do almost get caught out. They're looking to drop that control ward in time. So now he's on the Mustachio, but they won't be a further engage. Adelaide High can't afford to throw a team fight here when Baron is up and Glenunga are so far ahead. Delusion has three completed items in his boots. Tazaya has one item in boots. He is so weak compared to Lucian right now. He is a non factor in his team fights. Seeing where this one goes as Gnunga is starting the Baron up now. It's getting chucked down pretty fast, but Smite was Ooh. already dropped there. Bit of an early Smite coming through. Banter looking for the dash. The old coming through from Tilt Potato. Alan Hugger to try and turn this one around, but Gnunga still pick off the Baron. Tons of they can do anything else with it. Kitty will shut down the Asian noob finally. But Gnunga are just cleaning up house, taking out every single member of Adelaide Eye here. Kyo falls. Kitty will be the only one that survives. But here comes the Abyss of Voyage, completely cornering him off. It's going to be the ace there for the side of Glenunga International High. Picking up a Baron, or a free Baron, an ace as well. And they're going to look to hard push and potentially finish off this game. They got one carry, but they didn't get the Lucian. Lucian is so slippery right now, and he's got so much cooldown reduction on his dash that he's so hard to lock down, especially with the like lack of hard, like, instant CC. Yeah. It takes a lot of setup to CC him with the Rakan W and the Tornado. That's easy dash of the way. So, Rip Nathan G is playing this matchup really well. You can see Glenunga right now, they're, they're definitely playing this one safe. They don't want to overcommit. They're 11k ahead right now. At 25 minutes into this game. That is an insane gold lead. Because we are heading into the late game stages of this match now. And as I just mentioned, Glenunga, they pick up the ace, they pick up a Baron and get themselves an inhibitor mid lane as well as the tower and they don't want to overcommit, don't want to throw away their lead here at the moment. I mean, of course, we've seen plenty of leads like this before where can just get completely turned around here, Aaron, where enemy teams can come back in the end if teams are ahead, get maybe a little bit too cocky or uh, get a little bit too greedy for things. 
I don't. I think it's taken a lot of throwing. I don't think it's going to be one team by throw that'll win them the game. I think it's going to have to come down to three throws at least, like three misplayed team fights to win. Guys, do now as they do push this down mid lane here. They miss a void. They do. Could we see the ult coming from Cassio here? Gets the poison out, and we see the lockdown straight away. Tilt potato falls instantly. Banter trying to see these guys out, but doesn't do anything really there. Mustachio, Minsu, Nathan all pick up kills. A double kill for the Lucian as the culling will come through. Double kill for Mustachio here. And Granunga International High are going to take your first game in this best of three series. Both Nexus Towers do end up falling. And there you go, Glenunga International High secure the first win in this best of three series. That was such a strong showing from them so early. It'd be very interesting to see if they do leave up that Lucian now because of how strong it was in that first game. Yeah. And, and, and not even Lucian, I mean the Warwick. We were going on before about all these different picks that were available and then... Oh, you were just going to pick a Warwick. Yeah, you Just know. completely throw you guys off, and clearly it worked. <laughs> yeah, that was... Maybe the shock factor worked. Maybe they weren't expecting it at all, and it caught them off guard. But they were ahead from the very start of that game. I don't think they were ever behind, and they just played that insanely well. Yeah, yeah. They, they knew when to go in, they knew where to go in, and they knew how to push their leads, and not to throw them. And you can see, like, throughout the game, since Lenunga had... A like just a, a lockdown battle plan. Yeah. Early game, there was ganks and repeat ganks continuously, making sure they can get these guys ahead, looking for dragons as quick as they can, trying to get the bot lane ahead and get this Lucian fed. And in the end, like it seems as Adelaide High, they, they tried to stop it here and there. They did pick up a couple kills when these attempts were coming through, but I think in the end, they just let Glenunga just run a little bit rampant, a little bit too much. They tried so hard to put that Cassiopeia behind with the repeat ganks mid twice after getting 1v1. But it just wasn't enough. But they let the bot lane get too insane, and it was just a bit too hard to come back from that one. Yeah. And then, as we continue from here, then Aaron, as we look towards just finally recapping this game one here, because the Nunga had a spectacular game. We've said that throughout the game already. But Adelaide High, they still had some great opportunities. They still had, like I said, some great kills coming through. That great setup for the Zarya Khan. As well, obviously, it's always been that, and especially with the Yasuo comp. Like, you can see what they were trying to go they for. They had a good idea. It was just the execution that wasn't great. Yeah. yeah. But that's not too hard to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if they go back, they just relax. They yeah. don't stress. Yeah. They could come back in game two. Yeah. But it's about staying strong and not breaking yeah. after losing, especially yeah. when you're on match point now. Yeah. And not even that, just because of the land environment as well. Of course, you already have that pressure, those nerves coming through, and now you're a game down. It'd be interesting to see interesting. how much da Oh my Jesus. Yeah, we've got the damage graph up now, guys. And uh, that's a lot all of I can say is yikes. <laughs> that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. That's what happens when you are left to not get hit in team fights. Yeah, yeah. And that I mean. It just goes to show that how much ahead Lucian got Yeah. throughout that whole game. Like, having that pill, making sure his team was there for him, being able to stay in the back line. The Tom Kent was obviously an amazing pick here with the Abyssal Voyage to set up and get him out when he did get caught out once or twice. What's interesting to me is how much damage the Zarya did. Yeah. Because he only yeah. finished the game with two items and boots. Yeah. He almost dealt more da uh, damage than the Cassie here. Yeah, yeah. So, that's interesting. I'm excited to see what happens as we move into game two now, there. I mean, again, we saw this damage output from the bot lane here. Adelaide now, they have a very, they, well, they should have a very good idea of how they're going to go playing, like who they're trying to get ahead, the sort of comps they're going for. Do you think going into game two here that we could see them come out with something maybe a little bit unconventional to stop this. I think, think it might be something a little bit more standard. I think they'll try and put more pressure on the bot lane. Yeah. Whether that's being surprised, playing something like a brand AD carry or a support. Yeah. Or even Malzahar support. Yeah. But it depends on the execution. Yeah. Because if they, if the same teams were played, but Adelaide High got ahead, I think the same result would have happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. there is so much 
more team fight pressure on the side of Killamonger, other than just, oh, let's peel for the Asawa and like knock up people. Yeah. That was their best hope at a team fight and maybe relying on the Zaya feathers. Yeah, yeah. But Killamonger had such a better team fight with the Lucian being good DPS, the Cassiopeia being good DPS. And but they won that without Cassiopeia ever landing an ultimate properly. Yeah. Yep. That I mean, at that point, it didn't even seem like they needed it, just because of the engage coming out from a star show. He'd be locking people down or clad. Yeah, let's just activate so Nolt and just run down the middle of the lane and just... I'm not sure that either of them landed their ultimates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did see I did see Mustachio did get a couple of good ultimates down and locked down a couple, especially in that last fight, you know, he did lock down one of the members of Adelaide Hive. But even still, like I said, best of three series. Of course, Longer do pick up the first game here, but that doesn't mean Adelaide Hive's out just yet. We need to make like they need to make sure that on Glonger's side that they don't let that get to their head. Because if they let that get to their head, they could easily throw the rest of the series to two. Exactly right. I mean, reverse sweeps happen all the time. Yeah. So, of course, it's not something exactly you want to see, but the potential is there. Like, it's like I mentioned earlier, if you get a little bit too cocky or a little bit too greedy, you could end up overextending and overcommitting just a bit too much and then completely throw the chances. So, Adelaide Hyde do have the side selection now. Yeah. They do get to pick whether they want red side or blue side. So, it'll be interesting to see if they do go for the blue side for the OP first pick or if yeah. they go for the red side again and just hope that they get a big one. And of course, pick bands as well, I think will play a big part into how this game comes out if Adelaide High are able to win. I mean, it's like we mentioned, their pick ban in game one was very, very strange. The order of like, the priority, like, they've got Rakan first, but then they go for Trundle, not Zaya. They go for mid, and they pick up Yasuo, and not Zaya again. They're just lucky, really, that Glenunga let that one side of him, of course, in the end, going on one anyway. But even still, if Gl 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 had had so many M opportunities, it's completely derailed the comp they were going for. Yeah. I'm not sure whether maybe Rip Nathan G doesn't play the Zaya and they knew, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'll have to see how things do play out. So, of course, guys, that was game number one there. It was Glenunga International High picking up their first win this best of three series up against the side of Adelaide High. But when we come back from this short break, it will be game number two for this best of three set. We'll find out which side Adelaide High do choose to pick up and see if they're able to come back from this and take it to the final game in this set. So, guys, we'll be back after a very short break. Don't go anywhere.
Hey guys, and welcome back to the High School E-League South Australian and Northern Territory Grand Finals. Of course, proudly presented by Agfa Esports LOL. I'm still Bailey Baz, run homie, play play caster, and main host for this best of three set. Ross Hawk Doubt, Aaron Raygor Cox here now for Mr. Bryce Egan Paul. Yeah. Well, once yep. more. I mean, I mean, you were at, you were at Melbourne Esports Open yesterday. Yeah. You know, I've had quite a busy week. I'm not gonna lie. You know, yeah. I was at League Down Under. I was at Melbourne Esports Open. Now I'm here. It's pretty yep. good. Pretty good. I mean. How, how'd you enjoy it? How'd you enjoy the weekend then? I mean, Melbourne Sports Open, the, the OPL Grand Finals, pretty, pretty big deal. I mean, that's yeah, pretty good. So. It's all right. Not, it's not like this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Brandon Alias, man, by the way. In yeah. case you're wondering what's going on. Um, it's just like a striking resemblance, though, right? Just I, don't, I don't see it. Like, look at myself here. Like, I just don't see it. <laughs> I really don't. It, it's certain angles. Oh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, one of those things. All right. Of course, we just came back from our first match, which was Glenonga International High School. A, up against Adelaide High School in our first set, where Glenonga took out the first win in a pretty spectacular fashion. Mm. I mean, at least we saw how that match went on. The big band phase will go to that first. Yeah, it was, it was a bit interesting for the side of Adelaide High. I know we were talking about a little bit about it just before. It didn't really seem like it went how they wanted it to go. Yeah, um... I do think the bands coming out of Guangonga were like pretty good, but like the drafting from Adelaide High was just so terrible. Um, I like the Rakan first pick. They should have followed that up with a Sire. Um, the fact it wasn't Ben in the second band phase too was like pretty pretty disappointing. Yep. Um, and then the yes, yeah, so pick was a bit questionable. I think uh, I think, but he did well over it in uh, landing phase. Yep. Um, but yeah, that was just like such a terrible draft. It was all AD, no AP. Yeah. Other uh, two solo lane, uh, heavy to win. Yeah. And it was something that, I mean, like, Rego and I talked about in the first match when we did the post-game, or mini post-game analysis, I should say, where we could see the idea they were kind of going for with their comp, but it just didn't translate well when they actually brought it onto the rim. Yeah, it was uh, pretty disappointing. Yeah. So, of course, then we move on to, I guess, probably the, one of the biggest moments, probably the biggest moment of that match. I'd be surprised if it's not a highlight about it. Of course, that pentakill mm -hmm. picked up there by the Asian Numa. Of course, it was over a Mount Drake, 17 yeah. minutes in, and it was just... It, it, it basically just happened. Mm. Like, the team fight was going on, and then, yeah, it just had to go out of nowhere. Yeah, it was um, it was very great positioning there from yeah. the Cassiopeia. Pretty poor positioning also on the side of Adelaide High. Yep. I don't know why they were f going for that fight. They were, like, two behind in the lanes to go for fights, which yep. is what their comp, I guess, like, together would have done. Yep. Um, but, yeah, the Cassiopeia just really played that well. Got the panther. Yeah. Well deserved. Yep. And then, of course, after that, things kind of just fell apart for Adelaide High after that. I mean, we saw them get some return kills here and there. They managed to get themselves the Rift Herald as well, even though they did lose out on a Mountain Drake a little bit earlier on. But after that Pentakill, things just started to fall down for them. I yeah, think. I guess the communication on the side of Adelaide High was a bit tilted after that Penta. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just it's really shameful, I sort of think. Yep. I think it's also game one jitters too on the side yep. of Adelaide High. Um, probably just trying to, yeah. I was going to say as well, I mean, of course, it's only game one. There's still two games left here. And of course, both teams have had a chance to refresh and recollect themselves after the short break that we did have. But what do you think we might see coming out from these two teams now? I mean, we saw an interesting pick in the Warwick. I was like, going to international high. It worked pretty well for them, too. It worked pretty well for them, too. Yeah, exactly right. So, and the rest seemed to be fairly standard enough. So do you think we might see the Michigan pick some Glenunga again? Do you think we might see things bellow at now? We've we've had our game one fun. Now it's getting serious. Glenunga, of course, only one win away. Yeah, I think they're going to go for another serious comp like they did in uh, the first game. Yeah, yep. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how things play out, guys. So we move on to, our, to game number two here, where we've had Adelaide High, actually. I've chosen to go blue side for this first game here. So, of course, they get their priority first pick coming through. We're going to get their first two picks, of course, being on the red side. I mean, so far, we saw uh, the Rakan as well as the Trundle locked in for the two priority picks for Adelaide High. Hmm. Looking into Glenn and International High, seeing the picks they went through before here, Elias, do you think that we might see the bot lane secured there. We might see, like, say, for example, like maybe Kaiser with Morgana, Ezreal with Braum, something like that. Or do you think it might just be like uh, just random roles, but they're just like main priority picks that they want to try and lock down? I think they're trying to get a priority. Uh, wait, Satellite has blue side yet. So I think they should get priority on their mid laner first, or probably their support, I feel. Yep. Um, and of course, I think Glenonga should get priority on their bot lane first, too, since they got double pick. Yep. Or do you think we could see like the cast maybe prioritized again for days? I think that's going to get banned. You think it might be banned? Uh, and then what about the Tom Kench then? As well, Tom Kench, of course, picked up there. Uh, 
the Abyssal Voyage, which is so much in that game, mm. and for helping for set up and disengage for the likes of the Lucian there for Gunner. Do you think we might see that band or maybe Priority Picked? Uh, probably Priority Picked, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, it did so well in the first game, I don't see why they wouldn't yep. pick it. But it is banned, of course. Yep, of course, we are jumping into the second pick ban phase now for our second game, obviously, coming through. It is Adelaide High and the Blue Sun. So the International High here on the red side. Tom Kent will be first banned out, as you just mentioned there, Alias. And we're also getting a Gragas ban here against Kitty. Of course, Gragas being a big pick in the OPL finals yesterday. Yeah, of course, Gragas in the OPL did very, very well on the side of Shanfire. But the t uh, I don't... I don't think it's going to be useful. I don't think Gary plays it. We're going to see the Cassiopeia band out against the Asian Noob. Wouldn't be surprised if the Illusion band follow up here. The three key members probably from the side of Glenunga last game. Echo band out against LA and Hyde. Then we saw Echo band as well previously in our first set. So pretty safe to say that probably Tilt Potato likes himself a bit of Echo here and there. Mm, I think they're just going to go for the same bands they did in game one um, on the side of Glenunga. See the Azir as well does get banned out here against the side of the Asian Noob. Of course, that's a point we brought up a little bit before about the clips that we saw over uh, on the High School E-League Discord there and seeing that great team fight potential. And Clan will actually be the final ban here. So obviously you make your chance on can't pick that one up. True Legend had a very great game on him before. And Kaiser will be the main first priority pick here for the side of LA High. Yeah, of course, Kaiser, very good first pick here, very great AD carry on both. I can go both AD and AP, so you know, if they choose to go in all AD comp again, you know, Kaiser can pick up that AP build. Also did very well in the OPL final set on the Iron King. And of course the response here from Ronunga. Yeah, there are two priority picks coming through here, Camille and possibly another Rakan locked in here. Not first, but second priority pick this time, of course, Zaya still on the table. They do want to go for that. But do you think the Ronunga are going to look towards this Zaya, or do you think maybe they might try something different with Rakan? I do think they should go for the Zaya here. It's a very strong bot lane. Yep. Also, I like the Camille pick here into Kaiser. It really lets the lock her down to not let her go anywhere. Yep. And of course, could be flexed with wields top and jungle as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, but as we, as we saw, uh, I think in the semis, uh, Camille's really... Uh, True Legend 3 is a really good top lane. Uh, Camille, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it doesn't really give away what role they're putting it towards yet as well, which is very smart. And we're getting a Ramus looked in here for Kitty. This is insane. We're getting another random pick here. I mean, Ramus does have some great damage. I mean, it's going to make, I guess, Glenunga think twice about which ADC they bring to the table and even yeah. which mid laner and top laner, of course. Ramus having so much damage blowback with the W, of course, going into the Thorn Mail. Yeah, but I actually like this drafting now. They're already picking, picking up their front line, which is very, very uh, good here. But yeah. of course, it can be like, picked up like uh, if Mishashio wants to pick the Trundle into it, that's probably smart too. Yeah, of course, the Orn being locked in here for Shanton. Um, Orn again being another great top lane pick, kind of coming back very recently. And there's a Lissandra. I think they're just going straight up for the lockdown for the uh, Kaiser. That's what I feel. And Lissandra is something that we covered, uh, Rachel and I covered a little bit beforehand, how we didn't think we'd see Lissandra played, even though it did come up. But it seems to be picked out anyway. Yeah. So it's very interesting to see that one come out in the end. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, Lissandra was banned out actually against Adelaide High to see Kulunga pick that up is mm. very interesting to see. And we're getting a Braum banned straight. And of course, because they looked in the Lissandra instead of the Zaya, Adelaide High respond instantly by banning that one out. Yeah. Um, I do think it's a pretty good uh, pick here to ban the Braum. Uh, blocks the majority of Zaya's favors during the LC and the W. Shanna is actually going to be banned out here, the last ban on the side of Glenunga International High. A little bit surprised, was probably expecting the Morgana ban, probably might have been a little bit better here, because Janna's fallen off quite heavily recently, as Virus ends up being the last ban here, of course, targeting those ADs in the bot lane. But even still, Glenunga International High is going to pick up that Lucian again for Rip Nathan, which, I mean, the Asian noob kind of shattered him with that pentakill, but he was the main carry in the end for that game. Definitely. The main DPS match to stay in the back lines and... Pretty much was untouchable. Yeah, he, he played very, very well in that Lucian. Because we see a Lily picked up here. Does He does all right with the Kaiser. It just brings up in like attack speed and other movement. And not to mention as well the shield as well and the ult, giving more survivability to these members here, of course, for Kaiser. As we see Ari is going to be locked in here for Tilt Potato. Another interesting mid lane pick going into Lissandra. I mean, of course, she has that assassin burst damage. Maybe trying to stop Lissandra from popping off earlier into the game. Yeah. 
And of course, we see the Rook pick here. Um, they got two out of the last, uh, two picks from the last game that they both did really well on, which is pretty odd there. Don't know why they got him. Yeah, I mean, Warwick and Lucian, of course, two very big picks. I mean, they got rid of the time, they got rid of the Cass, two very huge picks for Gananga in the previous game, but they still managed to get the Lucian, still managed to get the Warwick, and of course, that puts Camille up top side. Of course, going up against Orn, that's... Uh, Definitely going to be a very interesting lane top side. I believe Camille normally ends up being out on top there. But looking at this set here, Alias, I mean, Adelaide have two great frontline tanks. Like, if I get to National High, they've, they've only really got the Warwick and the Rakan to tank some of those hits. Um, yeah, of course, Adelaide have a better frontline. Uh, they have a frontline. Um, no longer just want to, like, lock down the Kaiser in team fights. So then as we see this champ select finish off here, of course, going to be loading into our second game in just a moment. Again, very interesting lineups from both teams. It seems that the side of Adelaide High are opting towards more of an AP side, though, some compared to the AD side last time. I mean, hopefully we might... Like, well, Kaiser can obviously... There's two different builds for it at the moment. Of course, that AP build and the AD build. Maybe hoping to see them go for the AD build this time. They don't want to have too much AP and practically just mirror their problem from the previous round. But... So far, I mean, of course, they're going into this one round down here, Alias, up against the side of Glenunga. Do you think their pick's coming in here? Do you think they might have won out the pick man? Uh, I would definitely have to give draft over to uh, Glenunga here. Obviously, I've just straight up counted the Kaiser pick. Um, very, very well done there. Yeah, of course, having that red side advantage, you can choose two picks straight away instead of the one coming through as we are. Loading it in here now, guys. Game number two, Adelaide High on the blue side. I mean, it's Glenunga National High here on the red side. Of course, if Glenunga take this one out, they will be taking out South Australia Northern Territory Grand Finals here for the High School E-League. If Adelaide High are able to come out on top, they will save their chances here and give them another chance to maybe take out Glenunga here for themselves Ready to, to pick out the overall win. Should be a very interesting game to watch right now. And you can see Adelaide already pinging out the side of Glenunga, so they must have been spotted yeah, out by Kitty in there. And by the looks of things, maybe they're looking to try and push up, maybe seeing if they can steal away this Gred buff early already. Banter's gonna have to back away because he does not want to get caught out. These guys obviously are rotating around. Also, they're not gonna go for anything too overly important here. They're gonna back towards their own buffs, but a very interesting start for the side of Glenunga there, Elias. Yeah, they're obviously trying to scout out where Ramos is starting. Um, also trying to probably get a heat kill there too. Yeah, of course, wanting to get that vision control down, probably as well get any intel they can as they go Minions into the gone. starting point of this second match. I see Shantanom now is probably going to get vision down as well, knowing that the side of Glenunga were more bot side as this game continues. But so far, it looks like we might end up just having standard starts here, nothing overly different from the norm. Course, uh, having that attempt there to steal away the red early did get caught up there, so I think it's just kind of standard to do that. Yeah, they don't want to do anything else. So far, Glenunga here might be looking for a cheeky first spot. Yeah, that's very smart. Adelaide High School realizing that all the stuck on top side. Uh, so they're just making it safe right now. It's really good. Jump, but they will back away. They do see that Adelaide High did not make their bot side and luck for a kill attempt. A little bit differently here. The bot side is going to try and get this early lead. Already Adelaide High looking for that token. Mitsu's already going for the knock off their bot side actually. Bant has been dropped down to half health just from that small in cage. Yeah, of course, Armacan W is very. has a lot of damage level 1. And of course, Lily is very squishy level 1. So a very squishy champion in general. Trying to get that aggro down bot side to get themselves the lead once more. Of course, Rip Nathan G having such a great game in our previous match. I mean, big out again, big out here for Henry. He's on board. Starsho, he actually gets the flash blue away. And Kitty goes to flash over the wall and actually collides with it. Unfortunately, he will fall there. And first blood will once again go over to Mustachio. That was interesting from the world, they just flashing over the wall like that. I uh, didn't even get the blue. Um, until he, got, he picked up the kill there against Ramus. Still 
though, I mean, definitely spooked him out. We're not even picking that one to come through. And Mitsu, again, looking to get the advantage onto Bant. It did drop Ignite, but the exhaust was dropped onto him straight away, forcing him to back away from that engage. And now he's actually the one who's back on the Yeah, I do expect Hard or Splash to be abused, or like, I think Splash was uh, Splash. Splash this to be abused. So, we'll have to see if these are making a board of Mario and Tides to pull out the premise as this one will continue. Of course, Kitty is looking to maybe get some aggression here on side as this one will continue more. Simulation 3 as well, seems to be winning out the top side here at the moment against Shantanam, of course. Having the health advantage has the mana disadvantage, however, but still seems to be ahead for now. And Kitty was trying to catch out the Asian dude, but a nice W will stun that one out. The charm will come through, but will be clenched straight away. Starsky is here to try and finish this one out. Kitty uses the W though, alongside the Ignite from Ari. They will take out Mustachio there with a great engage coming through from the side of Granunga to try and stop any kills from coming through, but unfortunately, it was not enough. As I look towards bot side in Keo now, might be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, because that was um, pretty good to kill that onto the Flash of the Sword. Like, what I like to see, you know, abusing the fact that he has no Flash. Pretty much. Yeah. I saw that one on there earlier, so I mean, the original engage was, of course, Kitty and Tilt Potato onto the Asian dude. The Asian dude obviously got that stun, was able to use the E to slide away from any further damage. Mustachio did get a great follow-up, coming through with the fear and the Q to try and set it up, but unfortunately, as you mentioned, was flashless. It was shut down pretty easily, ahead of the kill over to get in. Of course, now we're coming up for the five and a bit of the mark here. Both junglers are one kill, one death. We're kind of reset the board here for now. Glunga are only about 400 gold up here. As we move on, a couple minutes from now in our first match, we saw kills started flying around a little, quite a bit. Do you think we might see this happening in this game? I, or do you think it might be a little bit more? Controlled? I do think game two would be a bit more controlled. I do think game one, like, they just wanted to go all out. They just wanted to get the first win. After this, obviously, a bit more controlled, I feel. We we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Of course, the first check will be Ocean Drake, and start with the Mountain Drake in game number one. Georgia 3 and Chance Norm. Just having a bit of a real top side, but nothing else will. Come further from that. Starshu is actually hanging out towards the top side here, maybe looking to catch out the orange. Already burned out flash, but we'll be able to get to his tower just in time. Very nice flash there from the orange, I think that. Warwick doesn't have a movement speed, so catch up to him. Because he is being picked out here at the moment, so they must know that he is in the area. We're looking to see if we can bait someone out as he seems to be recall stopping quite a bit. Yeah. I see what that what he's trying to do with that. If he ends up just backing in the end or just trying to catch someone out, probably kill you. So far, both of the players are here at six. They end up having a slight advantage in CS here at the moment. Something we didn't see in the previous game here earlier was more of these roaming windows that we normally see quite a bit of in the bot lane here. They can engage now on the banter once more. He gets dropped down to half health. They're looking to pick up a Keo now. Shield will stop that one out in mid lane. Till Potato, the ult from Cassandra comes forward. He will be able to dash out of it and looks for that extra damage to poke back. Maybe trying to catch out Mustachio. Of course, the hard one. Oh, True Legend 3 does get the ult down to Ari. He's trapped out, but Kitty was there. Try and block as much damage as possible. Telly is going to be burned out here from Shantanom now to push these guys away from the mid lane. There's Cool, the Forge God will connect with True Legend 3, but he already hook shot it out of that one. Mustachio is also hanging around here, maybe looking to try and stop any further engage, but that was a lot of commitment there in the mid yeah. lane with no kills to follow up. I think they're just trying to shut down the Cassandra as quick as they can, that's what they're trying to force the player into mid lane. Um, I don't really understand why, but yeah. I mean, Dejan who put that pentakill in the previous game might be getting into the mines on the side of Adelaide High. So if I drink this before it again, the flash from the Asian Eve with the stun, will it be enough? No, the evil though will be to secure that one, and he will pick up the first kill between the two mid laners. Really nice roaming there from True Legend 3. Really, very good communication on the side of the commander. Yeah, and of course, that's that roam that was just basically made. Like, the mid laners haven't done it too much, but the other laners we have. Maybe of course they're trying to get the action maybe towards the mid lane as well as being able to go anywhere from there. As Keo has a full engage, he'll and ignite drop. 
but he will get to tower just in time to survive that. But Bant is in trouble now, getting poked out by Rip Nathan G. They're getting pretty low themselves and getting action top side as well. The skirmish up to Shantanoff. It looks like he will fall there. Mustachio will secure that. 2 and one on the Warwick. But again, another engaged bot side with nothing to show for it. But Kiryu might be going for a double. Gets the Taunt W. But Rip Nathan will survive thanks to the shield hill from Rakan. Keo, look for that long range missile from Kaiser, but won't connect either. And you can tell now, Alias, that from this last game that we had, these guys are definitely reading the movements of their enemies a lot better than before. Yeah, obviously, Adelaide High trying to shut down the carries of Lenongo. And, um... Yeah. Obviously, yeah, just trying to shut them down as quick as they can. So let's see how this one can play out with the like, As we mentioned quite a few times now here, Alias, things seem to be a little bit more tense now, as of course they're in game two, it's do or die for both teams here. You can see they're definitely showing for it, they're definitely, they're just, oh, well, not, not even opening, but fully committing to this kill. And it seems that a lot of these guys are able to get away, they have a lot of disengage available on both teams' kits. Plus we've moved towards a 10 minute mark now, of course Ocean Drake's still available, Rift Power will be up very soon. You think we might see any action towards the objectives uh, in the next couple of minutes? I reckon they're going to try and contest the, um, Ocean drag, uh, Dragon there, because of Warwick, and plus the priority of the Gwala bot lane right now. I mean, a lot of pings up top side here, we're maybe seeing a bit of vision control coming out from Glenunga, with the Sasha hanging around, so we could see that Ocean Drake potentially being targeted on very soon, or maybe another engaged bot side by the looks of it. They have the vision, they've got the ultimates ready. But I think Adelaide High might know what's going on if the number just magically disappeared. And they haven't been back for a while. I, I do like how Adelaide High are playing a really safe here. They do have the Kaiser, which was really good in the game. Not very good in the early game. Though. And Rip Nathan now looking for that damage to Banter again. They're looking to take out this Lulu, but those shields are just staying up, keeping the Lulu alive here. Of course, Banter got having pots as well. Keep him, we'll be able to get him back to being a little bit more healthy than what he would be without them. I do like how they're, like, even in the PvP, uh, yeah, in the PvP and trading, they are going for Lulu because they do realise that Lulu is the uh, script out of the two. And plus, I know how much damage you do to Kai, so Lulu will be shooting her. Yeah, it's got some extra damage bonus as well, thanks to the Lulu. But True Legend 3 again, looking for that straight up engage of the chance and up. Oh, comes through. Here's cool, the Forge God will be able to flash away and does survive that engage from the Camille. Very nice flash there, very nice uh, disengage there. Drew Legend 3 is definitely looking to try and get the Zavonnage in topside. He's trying to get the kills down onto Shantanov. But just the amount of tank and CC coming out from him seems to be a little bit too much for the Camille to chunk down here at the moment. Ocean Drake does go forward. And Drew Legend now, he's going all in. Flashes under, but will end up falling to Orn. There gets the kill beforehand. Camille will still pick it up thanks to the minion support. But that was a little bit over aggressive from the Camille. I feel like I've seen this before from like yesterday where um, Bio Panther is like a tower dive swipe is there. Another uh, the the engage here from side. Keo now looking to take out Rip Nathan G. The ult drop forward. The ignite won't finish him off. Culling as well for Rip Nathan G will come forward to make sure that they can't follow up. Both jumping down here from side as well. And at the moment, a couple ults were dropped. But even still, they all are still surviving this one. They're just for vision control now, and we're still at the stalemate between both bot lanes. So, jungle's now up and backing away, maybe looking towards mid lane instead to try and get these guys ahead. Going up to the 12 minute mark here. First Drake of the game. Did go over to the side with Nongo International High with that Ocean Drake. Of course, given the extra health and mana regen outside of combat will be a big advantage to all lanes here with just how stable many the game is at the moment. But Nathan G was looking to try and catch out Tio again there, but doesn't have enough damage just yet to quite finish it off. Okay, number you then. Does connect onto Minsu. He does get the knock up shield. Rip Nathan G looking for that DPS. Banter and Kyo are pretty low again, but 
once more. They're, they're unable to, to finish these kills off. They go time and time again to try. They, they, they engage, I should say, time and time again looking for it. They get a great amount of damage out. Not enough still. I don't think Ramish has done anything. Their title was too low, and plus he didn't know where Warwick was. So he saw uh, the things towards the end there. Yep. They were pinging, oh yeah, hey, Warwick's down here, but he was still top side. You know, he's taking the right now. Yeah, yeah. And once again, True Legends maybe looking for that tower dive on Shanta. Maybe just looking for the tower itself now to try and get the first pick for his team and try and get some pressure across the map. But Shanta is able to bully him away for now. The tower will still stand topside. See now as well, Mustachio is looking for that Rift Herald. Can you see if he can catch him out? Battle of the Junglers, Battle of the Smites potentially here. There's Call of the Forge God. Mustachio is in big trouble. Why is she getting taunted down? But True Legend is here to lock down Kiryu. Tilt Potato will take out Warwick in the end. And True Legend will also fall. A double kill for the side of Adelaide High as Camille only picks up Kiryu. And in the end, Adelaide High is able to steal away that Rift Herald. Um, pretty good off read there, but like I realized that, like, hey, it's cool. Here in G does get caught out there by Keo. Of course, not having the Rakan there has definitely thrown him off, I guess, not having the shields and heals for that one. Now Keo will have that slight advantage on what side? Because we're a good uh, 1v1 there, so I'm going to be really close to the auto attacks, and the um, circus reads. Yep. And, um, before with the whole um, reading thing, it was really good. Um, use of the CC, I feel. The um, Varus W, not Varus W, but Ramus W was a bit inspired there. Of course, that tower top side will now pull the, the Herald and the push from Shantanom, so LA and I were in front behind before. I've now got themselves in the driver's seat at the moment. But the Asian Uber's gonna finish that one out. Just misses taking out Banta there, thanks to the ult from the Lulu, keeping him alive. The Asian Noob is not having enough in the tank to finish that one off. Maybe look for Kiryu now, but doesn't have the ult. We'll just force Kiryu to push back even after getting that Rift Gunner. I don't think that was worth the set of Gunner um, for a while now. I really won't have ult for the card as well, for whoever goes for that. Of course, Lulu just has so much CD though at the moment. I mean, it's already a quarter charged up. So even with these engages coming through, if they're not going to commit later on and re engage with these kills, it's difficult for them to try and get them. I mean, we've seen it sometimes against bottom side and then a mid side. Still, Potato looking for a charm, won't connect with it. They're looking for full damage, knowing that the ult's not available. And in the end, Still, Potato does pick up that kill mid lane. That was pretty good there, realizing that he has more damage with the um, magic fan boost there. Um, so, very nice 1v1 there. Still, Potato. Well, it's just paying attention to what's going on here for the Asian Noob. Already tried the ult onto Lulu. Was, uh, didn't end up picking that kill up. So he was pretty much full steam ahead to go and secure that kill. And Starshio now, we have to look out Tilt Potato alongside True Legend 3. Tilt Potato has been locked down, and that's an easy shot down for the Warwick. We're gonna, we're gonna engage there from the work we left that Camille will have enough time to get down with the E with the old team. Uh, to kill the Arya there. Of course, for now it is still 6-6 six, six here as we're getting towards the mid-game stage. It's only 200 gold difference. The tower for tower, and the next Drake sporting in 45 seconds. Not too sure what the Drake is at the moment. We'll find out in a second here. Maybe we'll look out Nathan G here. The charm coming through. Call cool, the Forge God as well. Born down here, bot side. He'll get struck, but Keo will take out Rip Nathan G anyway. Picks up the double kill, taking out Rakan as well. Some great roam and great team play coming out from Adelaide High to try and bring themselves back here and take it to game number three. Very good TP there from the on, very good on all T2. Um, I, I thought it was a bit crucial that uh, Kaiser was doing hell by himself, but um, obviously had to back up there in time. Now because they have four members here, they, can, they do have priority on uh, another dragon there. Yeah, of course, the Asian Which is the Ocean Dragon well. too. Heading down on time to try and stop his power from going down. We like to do here as well, they're just going all in now. They're going to look for Keo first, take out the main DPS. They will pull, shot down, goes to Mustachio. They're looking to take out 
Sun Shenzhen on the end Kitty at the same time here. Double kill now for the Warwick. They will take out Horn. Looking for Kitty next. He will be the next to fall. Three members of Adelaide high down. Could it be a fourth? We do see Mustachio again looking for it. Another kill for the Warwick now. Bringing it back here for Kanunga International High. They get their gold lead once more. And by the looks of things, Alias, another Ocean Drake. Great tournament there from Kanunga. Obviously, utilizing what their comps are meant for versus their rock and the hybrid first. And they to pick up the after that. That's Pojo for that kill for the members of Adelaide High there. And they get up the Ocean Drake too. Two Oceans on the side of Kanunga. Uh, now that's a kill on Tilt Potato here as well. Charm won't go through the E from the Asian Union to try and shut Tilt Potato out as he's getting locked down. Now the Charm on the True Legend 3 will be enough that Tilt Potato does pick up that kill in that 1v4 scenario. It shows how slippery this RE can be. Mm, I don't think if the Kai's uh, Kai, the, the Warwick ult either hit, it would have been a different story. But uh, yeah, very good dodging, very good right clicking there from the RE. Yeah, dodging out a lot of different abilities, a lot of C heal, a lot of crowd control, a couple of different side of Kanonga. And yeah, still able to dodge out a lot thanks to the ult, being able to dash around the joint, make sure they don't get caught out. Now looking towards the West Virginia Plastic, another engage to AJ, maybe looking for revenge, but Chomp comes out, cleansed out straight away, and Tilt Potato will end up pulling a Mustachio. The Asian did a lot of the work there though. Mustachio comes through though to make sure that it gets secured. Yeah. Uh, Ari, of course, Ari is standing there a bit. Arch in fact, after got the kill. Uh, yeah, it's a very cool play there, out of there. Yeah, the other remaining members of LA High, maybe looking to push out the mid lane now. See if they can pick up the mid lane tower here for themselves. Let's see where they can go from here. Of course, there's 9 kills, 11 kills here at the moment. And Raka High are starting to get themselves a fair gold lead here. With the Baron spawning in just 40 seconds to Alias, I feel as if it's going to be a highly contested objective. Yeah, of course, I'm Baron on the side of the number that would be a very. Very big help for them. I have to see where these guys end up going for here. I mean, we saw a lot of uh, pressure around there before in our previous game. I see if they end up being a key objective for these guys for this one in particular. Of course, two Ocean Drakes now. We had three Mountain Drakes on the side of the Nucky International High in the end in their first match. Now these guys are looking to just farm up a little bit here now to try and get some gold and maybe look towards completing some of their second items. So, we do see the Ramus building a uh, right to square there. I don't think he should be going for that. I think he should be going for more of like, a, like an omen. Maybe we'll to try and block out some of the crit damage. Maybe some of the blue I mean, so far he's only got the form though. Camille's not looking for crit either, so... I think that might be the best item to go for. Either Raymond or more male, I think it's better. The potato mid now does get caught out by the Asian new two ults to lock down the highly mobile Ari, and it will be the Asian new picking up his second kill of the game. That's a very good right there for the kill. This does lock down. Uh, Ari then to see the towards the end of the Camille ult he was trying to escape there but obviously just yeah. So it does pull back for Nunga now to we'll see if they can maybe capitalize on this mid lane kill. We'll see if they can maybe catch a tower, maybe one of the other members of Adelaide Hines up there that might be next on the list. Exhaust gets dropped though. Kyo was looking to try and get his support out, but when I pick it up with Rimnate the G looking for the culling, didn't connect even with the flash. And at least True Legend 3 to take down Kyo and make sure his ADZ doesn't fall. As Kiryu now locked into the lockdown, five members on the tower, but will end up falling to the Lissandra there in the bot side. As they look towards this tier 2 tower, Jens on the Dilton Center now left here by themselves to pick up the pieces after that in game. Ramma shouldn't have been there, should have just said, alright, cool, we'll just give this up, you know, whatever. But, um, cool, it does go through. But yeah, no, nah, Ramma shouldn't have been there, pretty poor play from him, pretty poor positioning from him. Yeah, of course, that's interesting to see, I mean, we do Very have game pause. Very interesting. Pause. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, game pause being a thing here, so we'll find out what the reason is for that in just a short moment, but... Um, something we'd like to find out is Ramus's build has gone for this. <laughs> 
bits of swiftness and the um, righteous glory. I don't think it should be going for that. I think it should have been a um, Merc Treads and a Fawn Mail. Yeah. Or at least a Frozen Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but as we see this one continue forward, I mean, that whole fight in the end kind of just broke off from Tilt Potato falling in the mid lane. The rest of Gnanga just hanging around, being in the area, and then just capitalizing on another catch out onto Banter bot side. And after that, they would pick up a couple more kills, pick up a tower here as well. It seems as if, once again, Gnanga are and they have more of that better communication, that synergy coming through. And they know when to go all in on these sorts of fights. Yeah, obviously the communication there in Gwananga is very, very... It's obviously the better out of the two teams, especially, especially with the roaming. I think that's yeah, played a big part in this game right now. We'll wait for this pause to come through, guys, in just a short moment, hopefully. But as we break this down a little bit more... There's one point I did mention here, but like, you know, there's first floors has been sorted out, but even still, bring this point up anyway. Talking about items of the floor, of course, these second items coming out soon, but what about these first item pickups? You mentioned that you didn't quite agree with the Ramus build. What about some of these other builds coming out? Uh, of course, the um, Luna's Echo coming out for both Midlanders, they're very standard. Um, obviously, now going both of the Thunders. Um, the Thunder hasn't picked up her tier 2 boots, which is kind of disappointing. Worth it, she'll go back to work. Um, but yeah, the Triforce to the Triforce is pretty standard. Um, Camille, uh, Spirit, Spirit Visage, obviously good first pick down to the Ari. Uh, Borg standard. Uh, support items also standard. It's just everything's really standard so far, except for the. Well, then what about the, the, the difference between the two bot laners then? I mean, we've got like the Borg coming out for Lucian. And then, of course, there's a item coming through for Kaiser as well. With the difference between these two, I mean, obviously, Kaiser moment 3 2, 175 CS to the 0 2, Revenant G on Lucian 178. I'm actually quite surprised to see that Rhythmus he had an amazing game in the first game, moving to the second game on the same chair, but he's kind of fallen off quite a bit. I think it's for. Uh, yeah, sorry, for the great. Yep. yep. Um, it's now on more of a comfort pick than he was last game. Yeah. Um, doesn't know, probably doesn't know how to lane with Lucian against the Kaiser. Not entirely sure. But, um, of course, he wasn't that Zarya Rakan in that first set. Yeah. Was just a little while ago when they went up against Lucian Tom Catch bot lane. And right now we're seeing a lot of traffic towards the mid lane once more. I do think uh, they should be sitting up for Baron here. They do have priority in the lands and the priority in the map. Well, we've got a mountain drake splitting up in 15 seconds as well. We expect them to go by. We're looking to try and set up for, of course. They want to go for that Baron. Give them that extra damage. Maybe don't they need to take it out more. And they want to go for more of these sieging opportunities. Let's see what happens as this goes forward. True Legion 3. Taking out some vision control and see a lot of CC starting to hang around here. Could he potentially out of position? They're laying high, they're going towards these small spaces where you can get caught out by Michael Sanjo and Khan. Still potato taking a lot of damage, and there you go. That's that engage we were just mentioning. You see Minzu as well with the charm on. All the Forge God won't do too much there as Mustachio will be the one to pick up the kill. Chance on now by himself. Try and stop these guys, but True Legend 3 will still take him out. The Asian move off camera as well did take out Keo. Let's see if they can try out Kitty if they want to maybe try and take away an easy Baron. Let's see what happens. He has Hookshot, will bounce it off. Bant is there though as well and gets Polymorph down. So True Legend 3 might have to back away, but looking maybe for another attempt here. They've been a little bit over aggressive. Maybe it's looking to stop the recall actually, so the side of Granunga can pick up this Baron. Yeah. Um. Of course, around us is full build coming into the big eight, so I think we've got the first there. Oh, True Legend 3. Completely stomping down Kiddu there. Iron Banter wasn't available to help him out, unfortunately. And now, Georgia International High. Just get themselves a free map. Of course, they do have priority in the lanes, of course, you know, like I said before. Priority in the lanes, and do they have a bit of pressure right now? Looks like Mountain Drake here will be their next objective here. So 
well, like we mentioned, having that seed potential, obviously it will be a big advantage for them alongside the Baron buff they just picked up. And with bot lane completely pushed out, having that extra advantage to go for some of these deeper powers is definitely needed. I think it's going to be a miracle right now for Adelaide High to get back into this game. Um, but I, I think we're not going to too much lock down for the area for the Kaisa right now. Yeah, it definitely seems to be working out really well for Kalunga here now as well. It seems that their lockdown comp is coming online as they look towards more team fights instead of just that solo 1v1 yeah. type stuff or with like, the jungle system. But they are going for this, like they are catching out the uh, Kaisa and the Ari and then they are translating back or they are moving that into more of the 4v5. Yeah, of course, getting their bigger pick now. Just that flash W coming out from the AD dip. The Sarge went for the ult. The Dilf Potato ended up dropping the Zonyas as Keo will fall there. Picks up that easy kill in the mid lane. And now the rest of the members of Glenunga International High looking to shut these guys down. Dilf Potato did take out True Legend. The rest of Glenunga are on clean up duty here. Srim Nathan G does pick up a double kill there in the end for himself. And Killy still picks up Vincent for his troubles, but Shantanoff will shut down with Nathan G there. Gets the shot down gold for his team as Pistachio looking to try and see if he can stop that one from coming out. But in the end, the International High had a great start in that fight, but something went maybe went a little bit too far forward with these towers still up and ended up paying the price for it. Yeah, um, very good engage there, locked him down. The card set is the moment shield to forward. Um, very good player to play there. But after that, I think it was just a bit sloppy uh, fighting on the side of the Um So, of course, they still have two members of Baron, the Asian Doom, and the Star Show being the only one. Having the jungle have that is actually pretty cool to see. So, of course, having that roam potential. Bring it maybe towards the top side, maybe look towards the mid side once more. But for now, here we are. Late game stage is now 27.35. Baron's been taken. Most Drakes have been taken. I believe mean, there's only one or two elementals left before the Elder starts to spawn here. Actually, it's depending on what time they take the yeah. dragon, it will probably be a one. Um. Yeah. So then, the number here, again, they're starting to almost get a 10k gold lead like they did in game number one. It seems as if, like we mentioned before, that they just have more of that synergy, that communication, maybe that confidence in their team fight ability. Obviously, inside of Atlanta. Obviously, since they are playing at LAN, obviously, yep. LAN Jitters are playing on the side of Atlanta as well, and not uh, on the of course, I mean, they're probably a lot stronger now being down one game and if they lose another one, they will be losing out their chance to go to the AUNZ High School Champs. And this is a great sneaky play coming through from Galunga if they're able to catch someone out. On the side of the back way, we're going to get anyone from coming forward. As Minsu might be caught out here, taunted out. Will get dropped out for Kuni from the ultimate from Rampus and the ult drops straight away. From Nathan G went for the culling, pushed these guys out. There was called the Forge God, but Kanonga are still picking up kills left, right, and center here. Kyo and Kiryu are both falling out. Hill Potato looks to be next on the menu alongside Vanta. It seems to be Shantanov's left, but it doesn't matter in the end as the Camille picks up an easy double kill. Kanonga pick up the ace, and now they're looking to break the base here of Adelaide High. Like I said, um, Kanonga's comp here just coming into... Just really going to work right now, you know, walking down the carries, destroying the carries. Damage. That's tier 2 mid tower falling tier 3 inhibitor for 4 as well. Well as inhibitor itself. It seems to me like they're doing what they did in the previous game. They don't want to overcommit to just base racing and just trying to get themselves a win as quickly as possible. They're not trying to be greedy here, which is something really smart that a lot of players around their hero do. This is something as well where they've got that advantage, they've got well over 10k, he's looking towards 15k gold difference out. It's basically shades of game one now. If anything, it's getting very similar. If this ends up playing out, we could see Glenunga pick this game, I said take this game out and take this series out. Adelaide aren't able to turn this around quickly. I think the carries, especially the lockdown of the community and the world, is to a head right now. There's nothing, I don't think there's much Adelaide High can do. My perspective. 
Nice to see what they can do. I mean, they still have great team fight potential here. Chains it off, being caught out by True Legend, not what they wanted. Of course, Ward's gonna have to be burned out just to stay alive. Bander is here to get the ult down onto Lord. He will get the shield up just in time, but that was two ults, job for one. But True Legend now actually gets caught out with the rest of Adelaide High and catching up just in time. Will shut down the Camille, but it leaves Glenunga now to easily push out the mid and bot lane. Because they should have given the kill over there to the high, so. Um, the fact that the slot is just unfortunate. Well, there as well, Kilpatetta just surviving that engage from the ancient noob there. Excuse me there, as the Zonyas was used there to make sure he stayed alive and the rest of the team were able to get to mid lane. To make sure that the ancient noob couldn't fully commit in the end. I think they've got to thank the Nandro with the ability they have. Um, something like, you know, like I did say before, you don't see this a lot in the place from the healer, which I do believe one is more of the high goal shooter. Yep. So of course now we're seeing when I'm gonna maybe looking to see if they can catch out the side of an arrow higher. We have seen some death rushes before that sometimes they paid off and other times not so much. Of course, having that golden advantage anyway probably means they will, but instead of that, they look forward to the mountain drake instead. That's two oceans, two mountains. Elder will be the next to come through, but the way things are going, I mean, Baron's an 18, two mountains and two oceans, this could be over very quickly. Yeah, LA High, I don't think can contest this Baron, so it's obviously going to be a free Baron over to Glenunga here, and I think, yeah, Glenunga should go for a 1v1 and just close the game push uh, that way. So the Baron will be coming up now, it's time to see if LA High can maybe steal away a team fight win, or possibly the Baron itself. Kanunga here going to be able to take this Baron and potentially use it to close out the series. As vision, which is normal vision battles for now, but we're waiting for this moment. I'm um, of course, right now it's just disastrous for Adelaide High School right now. Two legends here by himself, top side of one v five coming, so he does get the old forward, but it does give Zanunga the chance to pick up the Baron. He will actually come out from this, the tool of the forward shot as well, and Adelaide High just get cool with their pants down here. Two kills from the side of Zanunga get picked up, Shantanom's left here by himself, and Banzer will be chucked down by Rip Nathan G there. Shantanom you the only surviving members of Adelaide High. Shantanom just trying to survive here. Maybe trying to see if he can escape from Mustachio, might potentially fall in the end, but Kid yep, there it goes. Mustachio picking up his 11th kill on this Warwick, but Kiryu does just survive here. And now the push comes in from Kanonga, they will look towards these towers. Now Kiryu in big trouble. Rip Nathan G's taking quite a bit of damage though. Wait and see what happens. He does get rooted down. He's trying to stop this advance from Kanonga, trying to keep the hopes alive for Adelaide, but will be shut down in the end. Both towers will fall, and Glenunga are going to take out this best of three series and be officially the South Australian and Northern Territory Grand Final winners. That was a very interesting match, I'd have to say here earlier. It's not as explosive as game number one, but even still, Kanunga were able to just commit to their comp once more, ended up getting a great gold lead, take out some great team fights, and obviously in the end, take out the win. Uh, the lockdown carries out of Kanunga were just too much for Adelaide High. Um, yeah, just very well played from Kanunga. And I mean, it seems Adelaide obviously had a lot more fight in them this round than what they did last round, of course. There wasn't too many kills in the early game. There's a lot of attempts. Of course, ults flying left, right, and center. Someone is being burned quite a bit, but Alan High were able to hold on for quite some time. Um, during that last fight, it was a very good catch out there on Camille, but it's just been unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's just really unfortunate there for Adelaide High. Yeah, and I mean, just to, to recap a little bit more here, I mean, let's look at the comms coming through. I mean, you did not really too much, I, I never crack myself there. You didn't agree too much with that big band stage in game number one, but what about game number two though? I still didn't like it from Adelaide High. They should have been the Warwick. Um, oh, did so much work in game one and game two. It's just, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as you saw there, I mean, Glenonga end up dude taking it out there with a 2-0 victory against Adelaide High. It's very interesting to see.
So of course, we're gonna head over to the graph stage now, and I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron Ragor Cox here, who will take over some stat stuff, of course, some info he picked up behind the scenes here with the alias. Mm. So, boys, what do you think of the damage graph coming through here? Pretty uh, surprising, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, Aaron, if, you, if we look here, the Orn did more damage than the Kaiser, that's, uh, that's a bit questionable. That is sad. Although it's not that much more damage, like, it's not an unbearable amount as to whether, like, it's relatively close, especially yeah. in a matchup where you should be poking a lot. Yeah, because we do see the Camille damage there. Oof, really did pop that off that game. A, that is a bit of a lot of damage. Just a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. What's surprising though is that this game started out so close and so even, mm. and then just blew up massively in the mid game. Yeah. Like, the, rec the support damage is so minimal. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so low, but the amount of damage that the three carries did. Yeah, on the subtle one longer, it was just too much. Like I was saying during draft phase, they have so much, uh, they have good lockdown for the uh, Kaiser and the RA there. It was just yeah. really too much Radley High, didn't either do of it, I feel. Yeah, it was, they had a really good pick comp in this game, like, anyone that steps out of position, they get Camille altered, they get Warwick altered, they get uh, Rakan engaged on and Lissandra altered, like, there's not a whole lot they comp can do. Like, maybe they get an Orn ult, but there's not much peel for them to, like, survive a lot. The, rec the Ramage pick was quite like, surprising to me because they hadn't locked anything. Yeah. Like, they didn't lock any hard ADs. They could have picked, in this rotation, they could have picked something like a Cogmore mm -hmm. that could build the AP and then just make the Ramage completely useless, but they did go for the AD in, in the end. That was a bit of a tank, but just too little to lay it, unfortunately. Yeah. I didn't like his build either. It was just, it's just all over the place. It was like a, yeah. No, I know what like camera ruined. Just yeah, uh, just. Uh, I'm still like shocked by that. <laughs> That's a lot of damage from Camille. Yeah. And she one v four for a very long time. Oh, very. At the end, yeah, to like stall like enough, so, so they could get the Baron and so they could win. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in game one, yeah, yeah. like. Uh, like for best players, I think game one was definitely uh, Rip Nate yeah. and yeah. the Asian New. And then game two, I do think it was the top side here for Goodlander. Yeah, they showed today that they have carry threats in every role. Like, Rip Nathan G showed clearly in the first game that he can hard carry, as well as the Asian New. And in this game, the top lane just went off completely. So, that's something that other teams will have to look out for. Like, Having three carry threats on the team, especially the Warwick. The Warwick Four carry was, threats. Four carry. The Warwick was such an underrated like pick that obviously Adelaide High thought they could have dealt with it with the Ranus, with the Orn, with the Ari, but um, obviously he got just too far ahead. Yeah. And it's surprising that he got ahead considering yeah. like he made a very risky play level like two, I think it was, where he flashed over the blue wall to smite the blue away. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, I was, I was like scratching my head like surely this is going to be abused later on. And it just wasn't. There just wasn't much punishment, like, there wasn't any counter jungling, there wasn't pushing the waves and then abusing with two, three members in their jungles, like, no. but that was yeah. goes for both teams, there was no deep, deep wards no. that came out of this game. Or the not not game. early on anyways, but at the moment, uh, when we started taking towers, then there was some deep wards. There was, it was very methodical, this game, like, there was a few shaky areas at the start, but Glenunga showed that they can come back. It's unfortunate for early high because they did play well in that mid, like early to mid game. Yeah, they did. They did. Especially with the Ari picking up the one before kill on the Camille. So it's a bit su like surprising that it's too hard, but it just gives them. It shows them what they need to work on. Mm. What do you think they could have done better? Ah, uh, probably draft. I think a lot of it just comes down to drafting. Uh, of course, I did pick up the comfort pick there for the yeah, carry, but other than that, just fine. <laughs> yeah, questionable. The Ari was pretty strong in the landing phase, I thought. Did really well, push it, push up the wave, do what but she tilted could. But uh, Tilted Potato did have a good landing phase in game one as well, so, yeah. yeah. So, not much more you could have done, really. Mm. Just seems like every team I want to go for, just like, 
has lost this week, this week and last week, which is pretty unfortunate. <laughs> well, luckily for me, the team I wanted to win, like one team I wanted to win, won four. So. Oh, it seems like we're having a shit two weeks now. Uh, not lucky. <laughs> You'll get there. Just getting the end set up now, and we're about to send it over to Baz for the reward ceremony. There we go. Because hey guys, again, of course, Baz is here to do the reward ceremony part now for the end of this best of three series for the high school elite grand finals. Of course, our second place team here is Adelaide High School. So I'm just gonna get some photo ops with these guys for now. So just waiting for that. Of course, while we just fill in some dead air for now, of course, Adelaide High did unfortunately end up going zero to up against Golunga High, but we had some great matches across then, of course, had some great matches across the whole high school E-League series. Of course, you know, it took a great fight to these guys where, of course, we saw some great fights around the Dragon. We saw that pentakill come through for Glenunga International High. And in the end, of course, the second game, they got, I guess, like, a little bit more energized as it went on the early game, as we were talking about before, especially what Alias and Regal were talking about, how in the early game, they really took it to the time of Glenunga and they tried the absolute hardest to get through. And so now, guys, it's time to celebrate their play. Okay, so that was Adelaide High there, of course, taking out second place and I believe 9,000 right points there for their team. And of course, we're going to have our first place team come out now, which is, of course, Glenunga International High School A, which take a, a treasure trove, really, of rewards with them as they go on to the Australian New Zealand uh, League of Legends High School Championships. Of course, one of the teams we're being up against is the Melbourne High School team, which is all yesterday at the Melbourne Esports Open. Take that one out 2-1. So I want to get those guys up now in front of the camera for some photos. Guys will bring up 13,500 riot points for their team. They'll each get a triumphant rise skin as well as, of course, that qualification into the Australian New Zealand League of Legends High School Championship. So, of course, a big round of applause for these guys. Of course, these guys will be representing us, of course, for the South Australian Northern Territory side here. So, of course, give these guys some uh, big ups and applause, of course, leading into this match. I mean, hopefully they can do well for our states here and take out Melbourne and, of course, the other states as well. We don't, we don't want those guys to win. We want South Australia to win, obviously. So, if you beat them in a script. Oh, well, there you go. They've already beaten them once before. So, I mean, <laughs> big chance coming through to maybe take them out again and take out the finals for us. So, good luck, boys. Of course, going further into the high school E-League. Uh, series, of course. That's going to do it now as well for this best of three grand final for the South Australian Northern Territory High School E-League Championships. Of course, I was Bailey Baz Runholm, Flammercaster for today's matches. I was joined by Aaron uh, Raygor Cox as well as Brandon Alias Man. And of course, I want to thank them for joining us as well. It's a production crew, of course, the audience here and the players themselves. So we'll catch you guys later next time for the continuation of the High School Esports League.